everybody and welcome back to PDA, your handheld guide to understanding psychological data analysis. Today we'll be covering correlations, but more specifically the correlation coefficient. I know this looks very scary, but it's very simple. First off, a correlation really just measures, measures a relationship between two variables. Say, for example, the number of dice one owns and the number of tabletop games that they own. A researcher wanted to see if there's any correlation, so they took three of their best friends, counted how many dice that they could find in their room or lounge or whatever, and then counted how many tabletop games they had. And here's the data. Found that one person had three dice and one tabletop game, a second person had nine dice and one tabletop game, and a third person had four dice and seven tabletop games. Doesn't look like there's any correlation, but let's let the math speak for itself. Now to start a correlation coefficient, you'll fo first need your two variables. We'll say the number of dice that they have is x, and the number of tabletop games that they have is y. So we're going to start and make a table that we almost always make with the columns x, x minus mu, x minus mu squared, and z of x. That's the only real new one, because we need the z-scores for this. We've got the mean of x, which is 5.33. The sum of squares of x is 20.67. The variance is 10.34. And the standard deviation is 3.2. How'd we do that? Well, we went ahead and worked out x minus mu, then we worked out x minus mu squared, added that, and that gave us our sum of squares. Now the reason it's called sum of squares is because this is x minus mu squared, and we added it up. So it's sum of squares. Pretty simple. From the sum of squares, we could find out the variance was 10.34, and to get the standard deviation, all you did was square root the variance. The z-scores, we go back to our original z formula of x minus mu divided by the standard deviation, which, hey look, we have all that information now. Unfortunately, this is only half of the problem, because we only did one variable. So now we come over to y and do the exact same thing. Come up with a mu of 3.33, sum of squares of 22.33, a variance of 11.17, and a standard deviation of 3.34. So we went ahead, did all the same calculations that we did over here, and just repeated them for y. That includes finding all of the z-scores for y. Now here's where it gets tricky. This is the formula for the correlation coefficient. It's sigma of c of x times z of y divided by n. Well, we've got z of x and we've got z of y. People oftentimes will get confused by the way this formula is set up. So let me make it just a little simpler for you. All you do, it's the same as if there were a pair of parentheses right here. All you really have to do is take each z of x times its respective z of y. Now it's very, very important that you keep the cases or the people together. For example, let's say this person who had three dice but one tabletop game, let's call him Bob. Let's say the second person is Susie and the third person is Leroy. You cannot take Bob's dice score and multiply it by Susie's number of tabletop games. That just wouldn't make any sense. You wouldn't find... That's not how you measure correlation. So you have to make sure that you're going to take Bob's score of dice times Bob's score of tabletop games. At least the z-score for each of those. So it'd be negative 0.71 times negative 0.7 would give us 0.497. And you do that for all the cases, or people, and then you add all that together because of the sigma. So 
So you add all that together, you should get negative 0.748. Never forget the n. Now the n here is actually not the number of data points. It is the number of cases. So our n is not 6 because we have 6 points of data, but 3 because there's 3 different people. Bob, Susie, and Leroy. Once you divided it by n, you find that your correlation coefficient, or r as it's shortened to, is negative 0.25. This is a non-significant finding, because to be significant, we need a 0 0.05 or less correlation. And believe it or not, correlation's as easy as that. It's mostly just a lot of math. Now, I took the time and went ahead and did all the math for you, and thankfully there's this wonderful program called SPSS, which will do the work for you as well. But when you need to hand calculate it, it's best to set up two separate tables. If you need to, fold your paper, keep it on different halves, until you pull the last columns together to get your z of x times z of y. I hope this has helped you understand correlation coefficient a little bit better, and if you need some more help or information, be sure to follow the link at the end. The manipulation of statistical formulas is no substitute for knowing what you're doing. Have a good day, guys.